Hello and welcome everyone to Cookies Enabled. I am Will, your host, and I have Andrew here next to me, my buddy and friend. Uh, we are hosts of the Cookies Enabled channel, and we are happy to see you guys. Hopefully we have a few people popping in and out. Um, we are getting a little bit of a sluggish issue with our feed, and that should start getting um, improvement here in a few minutes. So, sorry if it's a little audio laggy at the beginning. Um, this should start leveling out pretty soon here. So, But thank you all for tuning in. We got some awesome topics, topics for you today. Uh, we're going to be covering the SN10 landing which was a very awesome success. We're gonna talk about uh, the whole Google and the cookies uh, and these banners and things and how they track us. Uh, we're gonna go into a new GoPro that's coming out, a uh, meteor strike that happened, and uh, talk about GameStop and possibly, if we have enough time, squeezing in GTA 5 as well. So we got a lot to talk about today. And we're gonna jump right in and I'm gonna to switch to our other room here. And we will get this started. Um, so our first one that we wanted to show you guys is the SN10 launch. I'm going to pause this really quick. Um, I'm going to get this reset here. I'll let Andrew take this one. I'm always pointing the wrong direction. I'm sorry. On my side, he's, he's this way. So <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Andrew will take this one here, and I'll, I'll roll the video for you guys so you can see what we are talking about. So. All right, I got the video up on my end, so let me know when to hit play. I got gotcha. you. All set. Play. All right. Play now. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, so I'm doing that just so I can watch on mine. We don't want to share screens because it messes with the lag, so I'm playing the video at pretty much the same time that Will is right now. Um, so we're going to talk about this. The video in the background that you're watching is about 15 minutes. Um, just as we talk through it, you guys can see what's happening. I'll uh, mention some of the key things. Um, we saw SN9 launch uh, previously, and then we saw it almost land. Didn't quite make it. Uh, it was like coming in a little too hard. Uh, this one was much different. Um, they finally stuck the landing. Um, and yeah, it definitely then looks like it, it kind of it, it kind of um took off again. Um I heard someone joking that it's the first uh, starship to fly twice. And you'll see at the end what I'm talking about. There's also um the fact uh, I don't even know where I was going with that. Um it's still this was an extremely successful launch. The stream that uh, you guys are seeing right now is from one of my favorite YouTube channels, Everyday Astronaut. I had, will always plug his stuff. He does some incredible videos. So, I mean, definitely check him out. He's uh, He's been in Boca Chica at the uh, SpaceX facility, uh, staying in a hotel in the city for quite a while, it seems, that he's been there. Um, so it's, he's got so many cameras. He has so many different viewpoints. They've got some really good tracking on some of these shots you can see. I mean, this is really taking off yeah. really quickly. It's pretty awesome. Um, they start with the three, uh, I believe it's the Raptor engines. And as they get near the top, they go down to um, one yeah. slowly. Um, it's just for thrust. They're not trying to break orbit no. right now. It just get it up to a good altitude so we can test the belly flop. All right. Um, the cool thing you'll see right near the end, it almost hovers. The, it really looks like it. I thought it looked like it was just a direct hover, you know. At the at the top, it does the direct. The thrust is just calculated right that it kind of goes up, sits there for a sec, and then <laughs> falls. Um, so you'll see that happening soon. Right now, there's only two... Uh, two of the Raptors going. Uh, they'll throttle down to one here soon. Yeah. Um, for the for this landing, uh, to make sure that it didn't hit too hard, they actually went with three. Uh, they used to try landing with only one of the Raptors firing. Really? Now they're doing th um, Some more right at the end. Stability, essentially, it, possibly. Uh, and a little extra thrust to slow it right. down because when it hit too hard. Um, Elon Musk did talk about what happened with this uh, with, with this one. 
apparently a few of the landing legs. And ever, from what everyone says, the landing legs on SN10 and all of these are pretty much just shit. Yeah. They've admitted that. Um, a few of them didn't actuate right. So they think they were landing on only three instead of the six. Um, had some issues with um, the fuel. Okay. Some of the helium they use. Um, it might have been a rupture or something like that. When when it lands, you'll see it kind of bounces for a second. <laughs> and they think that crippled some of the infrastructure. And everything went well. They said, oh, it's a success. They cut the live feed. They said, we're done. Hmm. Then about five or six minutes after that, out of nowhere, it just explodes. <laughs> launches it a good 50, yeah. 60 feet into the air and back down. Right. Um, so something happened internally. Sure. But again... Uh, he said every time these are tests. Exactly. These are. They're. Des- it's never going to fly again. No. They weren't going to anyway. Nope. It was a one and done. But it's a learning experience. Now their uh, SN11 is already out. Um, I think it's either on the pad or on its right. way. They're testing the landing legs. They're making improvements. So every prototype that they get up to is making a big difference. After 11, I think they're going to jump to 15. From what I heard, they had been building uh, 11. Oh, I just did the flop. Uh, so, yep. so now it's fallen. It, yep. yep. Uh, so you're seeing it start to just fall. And <laughs> I don't know. That's just a really incredible sight mm-hmm. to see. I I will never tire of watching this. No, that is so, so uh, cool. Mm-hmm. But um, while it's falling, as I was saying, SN11, uh, I think through 14, we're pretty much uh, the same uh, design. Yeah. Absolutely. At the, but they now that they've learned enough, they don't really need to keep flying all of those, no. and they've made some design changes into 15, so yeah. they're going to jump to that. Now. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, you know, we've seen companies do this yeah, all over the place. Building Cars, 12 or 13. phones, you know. <laughs> yeah, so SN11 uh, looks a little different, uh, pretty similar, but 15, I think we're going to see some big changes. Yeah, I um, expect some pretty so radical ones, video, but good, uh, you know. That we're seeing right now. Yeah, we're getting there. It looks like we're getting close to the land. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, still falling on my screen here, but I think it's getting. It's got to be getting close. SpaceX. This is one guy, um, and his crew. Uh, they've got some pretty good uh, hardware out there. Uh, this video that he put uh, was in conjunction with a few other YouTube channels. Mm-hmm. Um, someone had slow motion photography of oh, the wow. explosion. Was You'll see that near the end of this. That really, uh, that was a really cool view. So, so and far, so good. Here I we think go. it's getting uh, pretty close. Seconds, yep. It's one of the engines uh, fire, and that's going to yep. kind of tip it yep. back. And it flips yep, back. We, just look at that. And it's starting to, it's starting, it's des- a slow descent there. And this one, I thought, looked really and, good. Yep, so. Here we go. Getting, There's the you, zoomed you in view. You can see how much slower <clears throat> uh, compared to the. Uh, SN9, SN9 hit hard. Mm-hmm. This one, uh, and right there, you can see one of those landing legs just dangling. Yep. So it didn't, it bounces, lands. And it's kind of at a at a tilt. People are calling it the le- leaning tower of Starship now. <laughs> of course. But that's just where it is. That, that's all it, um, yeah, that was it. Uh, if you want, well, you can fast forward to... Fast forward to the end, about uh, 17, 17.36. Oh, well, this actually jumps to eight minutes later. Oh, no. Does it, does it show us the explosion? Nice. Yep, yeah, there we go. There's the explosion. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, so it luckily was we didn't have to. Pretty incredible. It um, was very cool. Oh, it does eight minutes later in its footage, yeah. Um, <laughs> at seven. I see eight minutes later. At the end of the video, they've got some more high speed, but still, I mean, you're seeing this massive oh, yeah, the slow motion shot launching it in there. It it was really incredible <laughs> to watch. I could not believe what I was seeing. This is very cool. Yeah, they really. And it's been a week or two that we're probably going to get the next one going. So yeah, that it again. They've learned so much that. from it. Um, things are going to happen. Exactly. This, is, this not... is a normal process of science and exploration and learning. Um, you know, I mean, especially when you go back to, uh, you know, the Cold War and they were testing all these rockets. We did kind of touch on that 
um, with the movie um, November Sky, and uh, when they were building the rockets, and gosh, they had so many that were failure after failure after failure, but they were always learning something and improving on the designs and the nozzles and stuff, and so well, that's it's really kind of what's happening here, only with a whole rocket, and not just one nozzle, you know? Um, so it's it's a different way of looking at it, but it is very similar in that, you know, we, we see, oh, it just blew up, that's a bad thing. Uh, and in this case, it's really not a bad thing at all. We, we really learned a ton, and, and this is not a total loss, you know. So well, you uh, that's a good way of looking saw, at it. You saw this near the beginning um, when their Falcon 9 rocket started launching. You saw, mm -hmm. um, I mean, they took off uh, very successfully pretty much all the time. There was yep. only one or two, I think, explosions on the pad. Landing is hard. I mean, you're trying to land a rocket using its own thrusters on land. Yep. That's very very hard that's very but hard if you look at the track record <laughs> of uh falcon 9 they yeah. have <clears throat> they've gotten up to i think 24 uh sequential landings without failure right. we had one recently um they're going to try to break that 25 record at some point but it that's a secondary mission yeah it's not the, the primary mission no. um if it's already gotten its payload where it needs to go cool something else this one i think it's a little more um a little more of a requirement that it's going to have to land propulsively exactly. on its own um yeah. just these are supposed to be rapid reusable so you know right. launch people in space land back on the pad fuel up again and go same day that's their goal yeah. so this they're perfecting it though i mean they've had years of data and experience and experimenting with falcon 9 now they're yep. taking that and adding it to starship it really is um they, they've learned a lot they're going to keep learning a lot by the time we have one launch with a payload or with people i think they're going to have it put down pretty pat it's... exactly i really think that, especially before any humans are boarding this and this is a, an actual like vacation kind of trip thing you can take or whatever situation th this they will have all, all of these uh ironed out by far uh i mean any any disasters that happen at that point would probably be more intentional um than accidental i would think you know but that that's kind of a tough call um i would just I have to compare it to like regular air flights you know like we don't really the only one that i can think of that's been having a lot of problems is the the new 777s from boeing they've been having nothing but problems mm -hmm. they were they were just having pieces of their airplanes falling into people's yards but that was an engine thing it didn't even had nothing to do with the plane you know that was the engine uh design and uh a whole nother and story there we won't get into so yeah. <laughs> um so, but yeah so you know this is kind of that of airplanes there was mm -hmm. failure after failure test planes failure after failure <laughs> Yes. But eventually, you get good enough at it that things are that it's safe enough for people. Exactly, um, exactly. And, and it becomes, reusability is the key. Uh, and, and the that's more really we can what reuse he's doing. Rockets, the cheaper it is to get yep. people or cargo into space. Imagine if a uh, yeah. plane took off, landed in uh, at Heathrow, and that was it. One use. Nobody <laughs> One use could fly. Just a completely disposable plane. <laughs> Exactly. So, I mean, I, you're going to hear me talk about this probably every week, um, but that's also how fast they're moving. It, wow. It seems like every week they've got something new. Every week there's something that they're working on, be it SpaceX, Tesla, right. um, Starlink. They're averaging a launch every two weeks, which is yep. incredible. That is incredible. Um, considering NASA used to launch maybe two or three shuttles a year, if they yeah. were lucky. Yeah, it was if the weather was I mean, like 100% perfect. They did a lot perfect. of other, uh, satellites, but I mean, we're yeah. SpaceX is reusing rockets. Yeah, some of them have flown seven or eight times, yeah. and yeah. their turnaround. One of them flew and then flew again within a few weeks. Yeah, yeah, so that's can, true. Yeah. They want that eventually down to within the same day. It lands, mm -hmm. it and it'll be precise enough that it can land right back on the pad. And then you just exactly. kind of, you know, shuffle it up to its linkages <laughs> and it goes off and again after sound. three fuels. Yeah. It just, it, I think we'll see that within a year or two. Yeah, I don't see why that uh, is is unachievable at this point. Um, I mean, if they had had a massive failure after failure, and I mean massive, like, 
they go to push the launch button and it's just explosion after explosion and it never even leaves the launch pad I think we'd have a lot to worry about, but <laughs> that has not been the case. These have been very successful uh, taking off, hovering, landing, and, and in some cases even doing this multiple times before a catastrophic explosion. So that is where I think we're seeing uh, the difference, um, mm -hmm. and I think that's uh, exciting. If you want a fun video um, of their, uh, of their uh, history, maybe we can pull this up later. Um, Hmm. It's called How Not to Land an Orbital Rocket Boost. <laughs> and it is, it is a yes. super cut of oh all my God, of yes. the barge explosions <laughs> that they go through, set to like fun carnival music. <laughs> yes. Um, oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> it, it, it's not long. Everybody go <laughs> take a look at it. Um, I'll put a link. Uh, we can put a link on it into the comments, I think. Yeah. Um, but it is a hilarious video. Just all of the, <laughs> some of them got really close. Some of them landed on the barge and then right. would kind of skid over. Some <laughs> just nothing happened. But it's in most cases they just put this whole it. super cut up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what I, they're not hiding their failures, which I like. And you that's know, important. they're not just trying to sh you know push it under the rug. No. Or they're they're putting it front and center. They're making a video of their fails and, and just think, learning hey, from this, it. Right. This is and what happened. This is, they're very transparent, I think, with what they're working on. And, that, and yeah. it doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. Right. And, and when it does, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so, so very cool yeah, stuff. We'll put the link in the description for that. Check it out. Definitely. Um, who's in chat? We got three viewers. I know one is me, but say hi, people. Hello, Comment. people. Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, so um, we did talk about the SN10. Let's jump into uh, a topic here that will be on our next video coming up this coming Wednesday. We did just release our welcome video, uh, which came out a week late. Sorry about that. We've had lots of issues um, with, with audio and whatnot. Um, and so we got that all worked out. That video has been posted and has been well received so far. Hopefully you guys check that one out. It explains how we got into the technology and the science and uh, learned what we know um, and apply what we know. Uh, to what we read and, and learn um, and uh, to the myths and questions that are out there. And one of them is pertaining to Google and cookies and uh, the, the cookies and the browsers and the things that they, they're tracking us with. This is becoming a huge topic uh, really around the world for mainly for first world um, countries uh, and probably maybe a little bit in the second world. But this is really huge for uh, privacy because uh, Google and a lot of companies have been using cookies and things to kind of sell information to and share between other companies to make money, which was not unheard of. This is kind of the whole backbone of some of these companies and why some of their, and if not all of their resources are completely free. Um, or you got to pay a small fee to get extra bonuses or whatever. Mm. Very um, quickly. Uh, yeah. Hi, Eric. I see his comment. Oh, hello. He is reporting us for uh, offensive levels of science. Oh, my goodness. Stick around. <laughs> Stick around. <laughs> well, I hope it's uh, not nice too to see offensive. you in chat, Eric. <laughs> but thank you for chatting. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Oh, man. But yes, so these Google tracking, uh, Google is actually looking at a different way of trying to necessarily track people. Uh, that's not really what they're trying to do, but they do want to learn, uh, you know, routines and what you're searching for, what you're looking for, so they can help you find what you're looking for faster and, you know, get to your location and your sources quicker. And so that's really the whole purpose of this. How do you make a search engine better? Well, if you already know what the person's looking for, then you're, you're 10 steps ahead. So that's really what Google's trying to do here. And we're going to explain all this in the next video. Uh, the main episode that's coming out will explain what those cookie banners are that are popping up on your websites and your browsers and everything on your phone. Even some games have them now, um, which is interesting. Um, so that video explains all of what a cookie is and what's happening behind the scenes, behind that uh, accept all button. Um, and so that breaks it all down. What Google's trying to do is throw the cookies away and, and start over completely new, trying something new. Um, and I have not seen or heard of any good prototypes uh, or even theories as how they're going to do this uh, as of yet. So this is just kind of, a, I know they, I'm sure they have their best engineers working on trying to come up with something to replace cookies in people's phones and computers and laptops and all the different devices we have now. But I, 
I, I just don't think there's really a plausible way to do that. Um, and so I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I think we're going to be stuck with cookies a lot longer than everybody assumes, uh, unless they find some new trick, like a cookie in the cloud, <laughs> cloud cookies. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I'm know. curious with this. I don't know. Um, mm. Maybe you you'll touch on this in the video. Um, do you think this might be them trying to find a workaround from the issues? with the there was a lawsuit out of the uk i think it was oracle or someone misusing some of that user data oh yeah um, that happens with a which, lot of I mean, different companies yeah that lawsuit is the reason why all these websites are required now yes. to tell you that they use cookies that's exactly and what we allow you to enable them or not it was mm -hmm. um considered I, I believe it was considered on uh, the lawsuit as like an overreach yes. of a, a personal um, privacy uh, uh, data usage yep so that's the reason why all of a sudden last year and a little bit every single site this site uses cookies yep. except enable blah 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 before that i mean they've been using them forever but they were not required to no. notify no. you nobody did so and um, that's i mean like it's i not said a bad thing that you see that it's a privacy thing yeah. if you don't want them collecting information for ads or marketing you can tell it not to enable the cookies the website will still work mm -hmm. but that's the only reason that it's there and i'm wondering if this new um concept by google might be is that a way to get um is that a way for them to uh get around it i'm not sure it, eric i'm has, sure uh, why is it such a problem for google and other companies for users to control their own data and i don't think i don't think it's a problem personally it's not no, this is more of an international no, um, battle than anything. I think so. we should be able to control our data. The reason they don't that they want control of it, though, I th at the end of the day, is it's money. It's down to marketing. Absolutely. They want they they specifically cater and things to keep you on the screen as long as possible, so you see as many ads as possible, so you buy. Shit. And the more it knows about you, the That's more those algorithms doing, and... will pump out new stuff and new ads and new things for you to look at and watch and that's just how youtube works that's it's not just youtube this is pretty much the entire internet at this point that's also one of the future of episodes we will website. talk about which is ai machine learning and all the inner workings behind those ads and the algorithms that these people build that run the machines in the code that that bring you these ads and and try to find you the cheapest product and get you those coupons to save you the money these are all part of the same program so don't you can't you can't hate them it's, all because we build, need some right? of them <laughs> so it, it is it's a love hate I mean, relationship build, unfortunately so. <laughs> yeah it that's always going to be i think a big argument in the tech and i mean Internet privacy is ex everybody's talking about it all the time. Absolutely, um, the net it's a constant threat. It, 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 I guess, right now, this is just the world that we live in. I'm not saying it's it's never it's perfect. Not about being right it's, or wrong no. at that point. That's mm -hmm. what's happening. No. But I do think there has to be changes at some point. Um, I think <laughs> yes. you sort of lawsuits like saying your website uses cookies you need to tell people that it uses and yeah. let them choose that's good we should yeah, be no. able to choose how our data is used um right. i think that's extremely important um right. but they from a company that uh, its old slogan was do no evil they pretty much um run the world if you think about it yeah. everything is, everything is cataloged it, the algorithms um we should do a, a video at some point on um, the algorithms on, like, of life. How, <laughs> on how everything, like, yeah. you'll talk, there was one day I was talking at my old job that I really needed a Dremel to work on some stuff there. Mm -hmm. And shortly after that, I'm getting ads for Home Depot of a Dremel. Yes. So it listens yeah. to keywords. Um, I don't know if people, some people think there's someone sitting there, you know, listening. No. No, they don't do that. Not, no, no, they're. I guarantee um, you, they, they don't do that. <laughs> I doubt. It seems almost impossible for them to be yes. recording every single thing that they hear, just because the amount it's of called keywords. 
keywords. Think of millions of people. Yeah. Times hundreds of megabytes of audio per day constantly. There's no point. We wouldn't even have the ability to store all of that information. We just don't. Yeah. It would take all of the cloud space we currently have to do that. So that's just an unfathomable amount of space. It's just not practical. I figure out just how much data that would be. I, it, I don't have the power to do that at the moment. <laughs> Average no. audio file size times hours times, uh, times millions years, of people. Times how it is. 8 billion. Yeah. I, I, so really, oh, what, what, uh, how, how do those algorithms work? I have Google speakers in my house. They don't listen constantly. Uh, but how that works, uh, if I'm searching something or even just you know, playing certain games, maybe I'm browsing through my Google marketplace even, and just looking at what it's, you know, recommending game wise. And I'm just clicking on a game. I'm not installing anything. I'm not uninstalling. I'm just curious. I want to know more about that game. So I'm clicking on it. It's storing that information as a cookie somewhere on Google's side. And this gets added to the algorithm later that, Hey, that was an RPG game that he clicked on. Maybe next time he's on Facebook, they might want to know they have RPG games you can play through Facebook. Maybe they'll want to advertise that to him. And so this is what's happening behind the scenes. This is totally, legitimately okay business, at least in the United States anyway. Um, so uh, yeah. it's considered legitimate. Um, and so that's what's happening. That's why you have to click well, that people, banner. And people, we're going to dig right way to more into that. <laughs> I'm sorry. They definitely are right to have concerns because yes. the technology obviously exists that they can record and listen to everything. I can go back and see my walking routes from years ago yep. on my Google Maps timeline, too. which sometimes is fun. That is cool. So, but there, we're going to see a lot of debates in the next several years oh, yeah. on what level of privacy is um, accepted. Um, it's. I don't think it's ever going to be a, a done deal. No. We're always oh, going to no, be no. talking about. It. Yeah. Um, and that's a good our thing, video you know, that we, we will out, we will though, cover as much as we can. Explain what a cookie is and that it's not necessarily dangerous. <laughs> no. It's not like it's just what it is. Granting okay, access to the, the camera company. or anything like that. No, none of that is so, happening. Your average song <clears throat> is say three and a half minutes, three minutes. Mm -hmm. So say three minute song, five megabytes. So that's what, 20 per hour, 25 so times 12. That's a so we're looking, oh wait, 20, that so. that, no. Time. Say what? I'm sorry, I don't have my calculator up. I should be typing all of what you're saying. Did I uninstall oh, I, my calculator? I brought mine up. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm just curious, let's say. Like, did uh, I uninstall my calculator? So five gigabytes <laughs> for every three minutes. So times that by 20. Math. And then. Fun. Times that by twelve. Let's say they're listening and recording right. for twelve, 12 hours, hours of each half day. The day. That's that's fair. One point two gigabytes per day. Right. You sleep per at least six hours. That's and fair, right? How many cell how many cell phones do people have or how many listening I'd say two devices? Per house. Population at least three hundred million right now. Yeah. So let's double population at least. You're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three hundred and sixty Terra? Quads? And 360 uh, trillion megabytes of data storage. If they were list if they were recording every, yeah, I, again, I don't think we That's have that Hard on guys. the planet. <laughs> like, I don't think. I think that would take every really about amount of resource that we have if of storage, including like your phone and laptop and storage. Now they do have. <laughs> They obviously have the ability for uh, to pick up on keywords, yeah. so it is possible. You know, if someone started and we'll talk. talking about um, something they shouldn't be doing, yeah. uh, some sort of sedition, <clears throat> that it could pick up on a keyword and start recording, yep. um, just in case. But again, um, that's not going to happen because I'm know, pretty sure that violates. Um, it does. I know you can have like Alexa that record the Bill you of and rights. stuff. That but... is. Yeah. I don't know if I can have Google record me. I don't I'm think she sure can. that goes against privacy yeah. uh, standards. Hmm. Anyway, so, so thank you for the questions. I love them and uh, keep them coming. We are jumping to our next topic. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Oh, this is the meteor strike. So um, you got the information. Um, I got that video. Let me pull that up really quick here. 
Uh, this is of it streaking through the sky. There we go. Um, so this will come flying by a few times here. I'm just going to let this play a few times. Um, it's it's real short. But uh, it's a cool video. Yeah, really... <laughs> I think it's like a minute or two long or something. Yeah, a minute, minute and a half. Um, so this will, I'll let this replay yeah, a few times. Yeah, that's the And uh, this meteor just streaked through the sky <laughs> in the UK. <laughs> and uh, it was incredible to watch the video. And it they're studying this now because it has it, um, the early days of the solar system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to pull up the picture of it here. I got it right here. I'm going to have to drag this Basically down here in the corner. It contains organic material and amino acids, which were um, some of the ingredients for life. Right. So that was, I think, really... It, it's just fun. It's fun when you get to watch a video of Meteor Strike, and you know you walk out to the end of your driveway, and you see this black smudge. You're like, yeah. holy crap, <laughs> it's a meteorite in my driveway. Um, and it almost looks like so, coal. It doesn't look like anything in particular, but this did just burn exactly. up in our atmosphere at re-entry. You know, so of course it was retreat really quickly. There right. was less time for anything uh, for any contamination. Obviously, um, just because you, you go out to your driveway, you pick it up, you put it in a box, right? You call, you know, <laughs> the closest university the next day. So it's a very good quality sample, and I think they'll be able to learn a lot from this. Anytime something like this lands, we can just study it and figure out where did it come from how old is it what is it made of does what can this teach us about our history which i exactly. think is cool um eric uh comments again he says we've seen with individuals involved in the attack on the capitol just how much data social media companies have to turn over to law enforcement when needed should people be able to tell these data companies to delete their data that is a good question that is a very valid question very valid and i've always been kind of on the fence here i feel as a public company if you have so many people on your service and you know maybe you know something like that's going to happen i feel like they should have to report a certain amount of to national security it doesn't need to be a public announcement like they're not getting up on nbc like hey so we found out that there's like a terrorist group that could attack us they're not going to do that they're going to like call straight up the cia nsa whoever and let them know hey yo um you know we got these groups because they already have what are known as bots that go out onto the facebook network google networks whatnot and these bots and i hate to call them that but they are not humans they are programmed programs to go out and search for keywords groups people um sayings uh quotes um pictures anything well, i know that's facebook pretty much is negative. tracking down on a lot of like yep. uh anti-vax anti-vaccine misinformation yes um, yes election any of that information stuff. yeah on one hand i'm it, this is where it really starts making your brain twitch a little bit because on one hand <laughs> I feel fortunate that they did have that information on some of those uh, people during the Capitol riots because that was absolute horseshit, <laughs> and I'm happy that they're being um, brought to justice. Right. On the other hand, yes. Um, if you look at it from just a perspective of this is my data, I should be able to choose what is done with it or what is not done with it. Um, do you figure out where to draw the line or here's um, here's how i want to say i mean it. so when you go looking to a... at this in the past in right. the future right um if i had to choose i would say even if it made uh, other investigations more difficult i'd probably i'd lean on let me choose how my data is used exactly um, yes that's it, uh, yeah it, i'm always big in letting the user choose really big, and not I letting the company choose tech, uh, site not a philosophy page yes exactly because <laughs> <laughs> we just explain how it works not necessarily not it should, not, what it's ethically that you should choose unfortunately inherently good or bad yeah you know? um i do want to mention though when you go to a park that is a public space but yet there are laws that enforce what you can do inside that public space this is also how you need to look at google 
Facebook, anything that you're sharing to a public space is also considered a park. And thus, mm -hmm. that and when you sign over, you agree your terms and conditions. Thank I'm you. not saying those terms and conditions are right. They're not usually. <laughs> the moment, like that's a debate for another day. But Definitely the moment that you day. sign up, you're saying I'm okay with this. Of course, nobody ever reads the terms and conditions. No, and in fact, <laughs> Apple played on that in one of their terms and conditions long, a couple of years, a while Didn't ago. Didn't they have a few like Easter eggs somewhere? They had an Easter egg there. in there, yep. <laughs> it was like you could... I, I like companies that do that, yeah. though. Like some of your small, like... Your, your small startup so halfway down just are you even are you even are you reading even this, reading right this? yeah hilarious. select yes so or something because one person is out there reads through every oh hey look I, at the i'm end, the person that's like yes i start. did read this why did you put On this page here this three, makes me there's mad the entire lyrics to rick astley's never gonna give you up <laughs> yes, oh and <laughs> One person has found that, uh, you know. <laughs> so oh my God. I like companies, I like tech companies that have a sense of humor. It's uh, or just companies in general that have a sense of humor that are good. Like that's some good. Say what you will with cookies or ads if you don't want them. Yes. I have found some really great ads that have led me to some really cool products. Thank you. Me too. Or companies too. that I respect and look into. Poopery. <laughs> Just kidding. I remember that. Um, anyway, I I like um, Ryan Ryan Reynolds commercials for um, Mint oh, Mobile right yes, now. Yes, yes, I mean, Mint Mobile. He's a national yeah. treasure. So yeah, he is. anything he's awesome. he can. Yeah. Anyway, so and I'll let, speaking um, of awesome Deadpool, companies, which phones are going to be next? <laughs> and awesome companies, we're going to spin off here and talk about GameStop for a second because this has been coming back into Ooh. the news again. Um, we're just going to touch on this really quick uh, because GameStop again uh, is is again doing great in the markets. Thanks to its um, beloved lovers and it, its fellow, you know, gamers. Uh, that's really the power behind this company. You know, I remember waiting in those long lines at the midnight releases of games and consoles and all kinds of things. Oh, and if yeah. it wasn't for Halo GameStop, it, I would have never gotten the opportunity. I mean, I was in a pretty small town. I think there was maybe one or two other, like, tiny little outlets that also did midnight releases. But, yeah, that was about it. You just had to wait until, you know, whatever the next day was and whatever their opening time was, and then you could go. But, no. So, yeah, we definitely are feeling the carrying of the company, and uh, I feel like this has definitely been a huge push and now they're coming out and saying that they are definitely going to keep the remaining stores open if they if they're going to at least try but they're pushing to be more of a, a global online presence um, where you'll be able to rent games and buy games and do all this stuff more through their website and last through the store um, which i don't hate because i really their stores have been getting smaller and smaller and smaller and you, they have like 10 games on a wall and that's the library. So, that, I mean, I'm tired of that. I miss being able to go and spend like an hour in a game library, like sifting through the, the stacks of games and pulling them out and looking at them all and stuff. I, I feel like they don't do that anymore. Um, and they want you to go online and you can look at videos and comments and reviews of the game before you even buy it. And so this is a, a better way, I think, because you're getting more reinforcement for the games um, and less push from the store. Um, and that's really the whole point. I mean, they have a new CEO now, um, and uh, I think he's going to do pretty well. Um, not that the old one was terrible, but he definitely got them into a nasty debacle. So this is all just kind of blowing over, I well, think. Well, they kind of messed up their whole business yeah, uh, model. <laughs> um, pretty badly. You buy a game, you go back, and you, you get three bucks cash five bucks in store credit it was terrible um it's and bad. i mean i've read some of the horror story horror stories of people who worked there oh my gosh um, yeah. yeah i've heard that too i think that model was never gonna end do you think they're kind of might come out as a competition for something like steam yes. or gamefly because so, it sounds like that's where they're going uh -huh. i think and this is going to be a like push it. because you think about they're, it xbox sony are both pushing that that online mobile presence where you can just go you know, right um, to my marketplace and buy the game i don't have to leave my house at all it's just downloaded in a matter of hours i can play it um, my Xbox One, it usually takes about maybe 45 minutes of downloading, and then you can play usually the first three levels, uh, and then it'll freeze or, or lock you out mm -hmm. until the rest of the game is downloaded. But at least you get to play a little bit of it, which is fun while it's downloading in the background. If you got an hour so. before you go to work, you don't have to wait for the whole thing. I like they it. They love it. Yeah. And it sounds like they're learning from uh, 
the mistakes that Blockbuster did oh, God, when yeah. they got into streaming. Um, yes. You remember Block, Blockbuster was like, no, we're, <laughs> we're fine. We don't need this. Um, now we don't have uh, late fees. Exactly. Oh, but it's late fees. You don't have late fees. No, but if you have it for a month, we are going to assume you want to buy it and charge your cart. They, I think GameStop, they have to reinvent themselves. Yeah. And now they can. Yeah. I mean, these short sellers were banking on this business to fail. Absolutely. They were waiting for it to go bankrupt so they could make as much money as possible and walk away scot-free. Yep. But enough of the fans, people like you and me that grew up with GameStop. Yeah. It was... I'm, definitely, a lot of people jumped onto the bandwagon <laughs> to make some money. Some people made a shit ton of money uh, yeah. from good, good uh, for you. buying the GameStop stuff. <laughs> I did like one kid, one guy made a ton of money and he bought six Nintendo switches and donated them to the local children's hospital, yep. which is pretty awesome. Oh yeah. Very awesome. I'm not yeah. going to cry Very over awesome. this hedge fund losing a few billion dollars. Cause <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, but it, it's showing, um, and they've been talking, um, there have been the GameStop hearings yeah. and, uh, there've been a lot of, there's been a lot of talk of, you know, places like, um, what is, um, Cash App oh, or the yeah. other trading app, mm -hmm. they call um, it like gamification of stocks. Yeah, um, like um, why don't we make that one? fun? Robinhood or something? I think was the other one. Robin. Yep. Yeah, they're saying what's the problem with gamification? Yeah, you know, no. people, it's easy. Uh, people can understand it. You don't have to be a stockbroker. Nope. You can just, especially during the pandemic, sit home, buy and sell stocks. You're investing in a company that you want to succeed and i definitely sort of think thing. investing uh -huh. in in gamestop is not a terrible idea I, especially after this revolution we saw there's i if i had the spare money right now i totally I'm would what they're going to be able to do yeah. now that they're kind of you know re been resuscitated yeah, i'm loving that what's next game i'm Ken, stoked you know her fans gave them a second chance mm -hmm. let's see what they can do well and they always Which... they were already good at bringing us the exclusives and the ultimate packages and the extreme whatever and the the hard to find walkthroughs and that's the game stop that we miss the one that had those hard to find games and the really awesome accessories that you just couldn't get anywhere else that's i think what's coming back but it's going to be more of that I online thing where you have to give them your address you buy the game online, you download it from their website, and then they send you the extra stuff probably in the mail or somebody delivers it to you if mm -hmm. you've got one locally in your area. I know my my local store does have delivery, which is surprising. I, I'm like blown away that my, my game can come to me. Wait, what? How, how did, wait, what? <laughs> Say that again, you're not, you're not bringing me a pizza stuff. too, are you? That'd you know, be awesome. The, the plushy Yoda <laughs> or the bumper <laughs> yeah. stickers or keychains. Oh my God. Most of the time I'd go yes. in and Andy would be looking at a game and I'm just, <clears throat> I'm looking at old school Xbox stuff. Yes. Like, do, yes. do they have, uh, do they have Need for Speed? Do they have any of these? Uh, they have Burnout. You know, because, and, oh look, I can well, get a little uh, Yoda games button for my constantly. backpack. Okay, I got one that says I'm Batman. Yep. It, it, it's fun. <laughs> That's what I go there for. But I think yes. they provide even more um, with, yeah. they focus, I mean, they've had an online shop forever, but if they really put yes, their they focus have. into that, I think it could be mm -hmm. a game changer. Um, I really think so too. We'll I see think what this could be with. huge for them. Um, and I think they'll get some some game lock on exclusives like they used to have with like the the rock band guitar hero um, exclusive console releases like special editions and stuff for I only a GameStop. I prefer and, the small, you know, mom and pop uh, used game yeah. uh, places. They need. To we had a few yeah. in Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids when I lived there that I'd go to them before GameStop whenever they had better yeah. prices, they yep. had better return uh, rates. They had all the same games, and yep. there's actually one right down the street up here in Grand Rapids called Video Idiots, uh, and it is. Uh, I think I'm saying it wrong. Sorry about that. Uh, it is. It looks like a little mom and pop house, but they turned like a living room into a game store, and it is again like a game library. Say, um, yeah, it's I'm awesome. <laughs> I think it's it's been fun to watch uh, the whole story of GameStop, but I'm still always gonna, you know go to a local place yes. before i go to there absolutely and i mean again you know, i always go to their anything, website i always check the prices yeah yeah you know but it, it's, it is what it is and i'm just happy to see them coming back so check them out check out gamestop give them mm -hmm. your give them your all um we got one other thing we wanted to talk about oh i wanted to mention uh so gta 5 so this one 
this game has been marked the best game of all time apparently uh, and has uh, for the highest console sales of any game ever released ever apparently uh, which is a huge feat I mean how do you what what, what were they beating I mean like half-life I don't know what could have what were they beating like does anybody know I'm like <laughs> Like, I don't so was remember. was it just GTA 5 or the whole GTA series? No, just has been the best. 5. Just GTA just 5. 5, not the whole series. You said you played What made it different than the others? So, again, it was, you had a really good online the, presence. Yeah. It was, again, you had, like, a whole virtual city. Like, you had two cities kind of smushed together, but you didn't have to do the online stuff. I didn't even play the online stuff. I did all, everything offline, and I loved the game still. It was still super fun. It was just extremely realistic. I mean, you could do anything, get everything, play anything. I mean, it was kind of crazy cool. Like, I don't know how you even code something that massive and render it as good a detail as they did. And, and, you know, it was extremely vulgar. It just played on all the the ambiances. Well, it's, of, it's always going to be vulgar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It has to be, you know. But, um yeah. I think three is still my favorite to be completely 100%. I didn't play any of the online stuff for five. And that is apparently what makes this game. It's number one selling point is that they continuously are updating it and updating it and updating it. But apparently I'm six sure is in the, the works. Help that out. Yeah. And I can't wait for the next one. Apparently there was also rumors that they might be bringing some kind of, um, uh, what was the other one that they had? Uh, San Antonio, I think. I'm probably saying it wrong. They had a, it was way back on like the 360 version. It was after GTA 4, San Andreas. Or uh, San like Andreas? That. Yes. Apparently they yeah, may be doing a that uh, play off of that for the next one or going back to that kind of feel of game, which I never really played much of that one. Uh, but that one had a bunch of Easter eggs in it apparently too. So um, like they always do. They're, they're hard to find, fun stuff. Uh, love those games and uh, definitely can't wait to see what they come up with. Great series. Uh, if you haven't played them, make sure your kids aren't in the room, but definitely play it. <laughs> <laughs> or if they're in the room, you can explain to them what's happening yeah, if the, they're old enough to get the concepts. I this mean, is fake. We, we, we do not do this in real life kind of thing. You know? well, it's stomach You're not stuck running around. people I mean, over. We, what? <laughs> the outrage when the first one came out oh, and all man. the parents... I mean, it, it, there's a reason that it's rated the way it is. Yeah. So, Actually, if, I think you had to show your ID to buy GTA, this for a while. I, I don't know why if you is have your to. seven year old playing GTA? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> now, my friend, like, I have had several I friends that have said that the they've played. The Revenant, and he got scared. <laughs> well, he's free. You shouldn't have been letting him watch The Revenant. It's right. just simple. It's... By the way, four viewers, most viewers we've ever had. Hello, all viewers. I appreciate you all. Um, but if oh, you man, haven't played yeah. uh, GTA Five, definitely check it out. Um, it's again, it was one of my favorites. I, it was uh, out of out of the series. I think three is still my all time favorite, just because of the radio stations that they had. That as you're driving oh, through the awesome. city, all you wanted to do was just listen to the radio because it was so funny. And the commercials. I did that with uh, Burnout. Burnout, oh, had, Burnout yes. games had the best soundtracks ever, and I found all the playlists on Spotify. No way! And it uh. so every night at work, I blast that through the speakers. <laughs> old, like nineties, oh early aughts, yes. uh, punk rock. It. Oh wow! Okay, so that was fun day. let me see here. Um, the one last thing I did want to talk about, which is kind of cool news, and everybody's been dealing with webcam issues and stuff. Um, we got a new one coming out from GoPro, uh, and this is called the oh, yeah. um, Insta360 GoPro 2. It's kind of a long haul name there, unfortunately, but it is really cool. You can clip this thing to its magnetic holster, which can clip to your hat, to your uh, wristband. You know, uh, there's a necklace thing. You can clip it to your coat or whatever, the kayak you're on or skateboard or bike, whatever it is. This thing can do it all, apparently. It has its uh, built-in six-axis controller to control the stabilization of the camera. Even though it is so tiny, apparently it has the most stable 4K video you'll ever see. Uh, it looks amazing. I think this is really cool. Google did try to do something like this in the past, where your the AI is really 
doing all of the work of the camera. It's not just recording. Mm-hmm. It's taking pictures. It's you know, digitalizing it, it's making the image look better and stabilizing things. And so Google tried this and it was a very tiny little device just like this. It looked like a little web camera. I I couldn't figure out what it was called, unfortunately. I think it was called the Google Clip, Um, which again, weird name. I'm sorry, Google, you failed this one. (laughs) But I think, I really think this one is a winner. It looks really cool. It's about looks like the shape of your thumb. Uh, the ca- the charging case for it is a, a little tripod stand, um, and uh, you can you know put it right into the case. It charges it back up, um, and it also is a remote to the camera. So it has all these amazing little features and things. They show when you put it on your cat and your dog, and you can change a, you know, put lens guards on it and all kinds of stuff. They really crammed every bell and whistle they could think of into this thing. But they also made it as small as possible. It's almost as a page out of Apple's book. This is something I would see Apple trying to do. Again, Google already tried to do this and eventually ended up having to discontinue the clip because nobody bought it. Um, I wanted one, but it was really expensive. They're like $250 for a clip. And then they completely discontinued it because the same software is already in your Google phone. So if you got a Google camera in your phone, you've already got the same software. It was superfluous at that point. Exactly. So that's why they discontinued it. But I think this Insta360 thing is probably one of the coolest little mini cameras I have seen with some of the best image quality as well. I mean, considering they're clipping it to their their person and running around in videos and it looks like, you know, you're holding it completely still and trying to not run. I mean, mm-hmm. that's I've never I've never seen software in such a small device do something so radical so that's that's huge and if they can take this software and sell it off to people or in other companies like samsung and apple then it can easily be repurposed into into normal cameras that we have in our phones and on our watches and all of our other smart devices because more and more devices are going to start having cameras in them so we need to get ready for that as well and this stabilization or flow state as they call it um, is really what makes this camera awesome awesome i don't have a price for you but it is apparently for sale and available to buy on their website um which i will give the link in uh the display and all that stuff when we update you later um i'll get all these links out to you guys and we'll show you the meteor we'll get you the gta5 link uh we'll get you guys all of that stuff i unfortunately don't know where you can buy gta5 right now i probably should have looked that up um I'm pretty sure you can buy it on any GameStop for sure. Go to their website, type in GTA five guarantee. They'll have a download that you can purchase because <clears throat> I know it was for every council and I'm pretty sure it was I, at least the, the three sixties and up should and like, you know, all the way through PlayStation. Well, I don't know if the fives and the series X's can do that just because they're so new. I don't know if they have the emulators to run, the five (laughs) i i mean i'd be kind of surprised if they can't because the architecture is very similar at least in the xbox's standpoint it is but not so much for sony a little little different there we'll get into that in a different video as well but um absolutely yeah i I mean Camera technology and how we've been able to shrink it has made such a big difference. You get right. 4K drones that weigh less than a cup of coffee, all Which of that. blow my mind. Um, <laughs> but some of these companies are going in that direction, sure. and others, I'm not sure. Like, what's next for Apple? You know, that's a really you good know, question. There's um, so many I know you rumors. said they might be discontinuing the iMac line, which makes sense. Yes. But this I really don't know what their next big thing is going to be. Honestly, I think their innovation is really tanked since uh steve jobs passed away unfortunately yeah i Um, agree he made that company what it was he his the design aesthetics what they did the innovations i mean mean, the iphone was monumental even the ipod the the ipod like like, blew people's minds they did so much (laughs) and we talked about it you talked about it in the history of computers video. Yes, yeah, I did. He was um, an interesting individual. <laughs> we'll put it that way. That but you be... can't deny what they created. And it's not been the same. I mean, I love the new trash can Mac Pro. Yeah. You know, the big black uh, cylinder. But what's 
what is there to innovate on next? What's next for them? I have no clue. It's, and it's such a tough like one. You two, so in the many... past, I might have an idea of right. what, but now it's just what's happening. Well, they've, they've got <laughs> so many new patents and, and old patents that they never even touched. Like they had one that came out. I remember back when I was in college, they had one that was actually, I felt like, I felt like they were stealing one of my ideas. I've always had this idea for like a briefcase kind of computer. They won't. Um, and I've been working on it. It's just nowhere near being able to show anybody. But uh, because I wanted to be able to do everything, like literally everything from here's a hard drive. I can pull it right out and give it to you to here's a USB on a stick computer that also connects to this and does this and has projectors yeah, and tells me directions. It's and, phone. Yeah, I know. I know. But anyway, so <laughs> um, so this little so they so had an idea for, for uh, stealing your idea for the iPhone. Well, no, 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 not the iPhone. But this is this was an idea for it looked like a it looks like a briefcase essentially. But when you set it down, you can pull out a keyboard and a mouse, and then it projects onto a wall the the screen. So this is a computer, but it just doesn't look like a computer. You wouldn't know it was a computer until you push the power button on it, and then it just pops open and finds. You could a, probably a wall. build that with. You could build that with today's. Uh, you know, you could store some parts, yes. a small projector, yes. just uh, get a little Raspberry Pi. Uh, Absolutely. You could build it into something much smaller. Mm -hmm. I mean, people do crazy things with computers. Oh, I, yeah. I've seen them built into the most random objects that you could imagine. You know. Yes. You yeah. Can, so just I, for fun, you know, why not? I really don't know exactly sure. where they're going to go with the whole. Uh, I really think we'll see uh, some really innovative iPhones coming out and probably uh, a, a real iPhone shift. iPhone 15 is coming soon, I think. Or yeah. iPhone 12. I think we'll see a shift in their tablet lines as well. But I really don't mm -hmm. know what. I know I know the iMac Pro is getting discontinued, but not the MacBook Pro because that I think they should continue to push and I think they should just put uh, touch screens in them. I really think they well, need to have touch these screens. Days, <laughs> Everything really else stays the same. <laughs> you know, like your average user doesn't have it. They have a laptop these days or they have a tablet or yep. a Chromebook. Yep. Um, so you can keep like a basic iMac, that sort of right. thing, or a Mac Pro if you're, you know, some sort of media producer, you're doing video editing. Right. Like, but again, even there, I'm using a Mac Mini. See? It's a little older. I need to upgrade it eventually. But I'm using a full desktop. Tablet. They have they have <laughs> desktop for serious users. They yep. have laptops for your average user. They have the phone for everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what market they're going to get into next. They've got to do. They've got to come up with something. Are, are they going to get into the AR? Well, uh, there, you know, there was rumors that Apple might be working on a car competition to that Apple may come out with a car oh, that would be car. comparable to Tesla's car. <laughs> car that where it can drive you to your destinations and play you your favorite music and rub your feet or something. I don't know. It'll probably do something crazy that nothing, nothing uh, no other car has done before. Uh, but they're, they have denied this rumor numerous times, even though they have multiple patents that look like cars that Google had also they filed have. lots of patents like that too. And, they actually tested their drivable cars, and actually there's a few uh, right down the street here. Um, I mean, there is a driver, there's a human driver in it, but the, the little car does actually drive itself around the yeah, um, Grand Valley campus up here. Um, so it's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, Mac rumors, I'm uh, looking, uh, they're talking from December, they're still uh, working on it. Um, I really it'd be interesting to see them enter the uh, you I, know electric car field. I don't um, think they'll jump in the electric car field soon. Gorgeous. I'll tell you that. I, if yeah. Apple's good at anything. That car is going to be. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Beautiful. It's going to cost you know <laughs> half a million, but it's going to be beautiful. Oh, it'll be it'll be ridiculously <laughs> expensive. It'll be like Bentley prices. Like they're hand building these, you I'm know, like like that. a Bentley. <laughs> But what actually I think they're going to be coming out with probably very sooner rather than later is, again, like revolutionizing the tablet and, and either making it like a shrinkable, expandable kind of tablet. And I think they will come out with an AR glasses or VR glasses or XR or somewhere in that uh, range of There's augmented something virtual. In the, uh, augmented reality market, yeah. definitely. Uh, um, they've I been mean, working on that longer than HoloLens. We talked about some of the new headsets. We did, yeah. They could get that market next. Absolutely. Um, 
when is their new when is their conference this year that's that's when we'll probably find out a bit more uh, i don't but know that i know samsung's new one is uh seven days from today march 17th uh there will be a new oh, samsung okay. conference uh, apparently they've got new stuff coming out i think this is their budget phones uh based on the s21 series uh, like they always have that Samsung A G sixty five. These are great phones. They're like a lower budget model. They still have the best processors and RAM and, and stuff crammed in them. Uh, but sometimes the screen resolution and you know the frame rates aren't like one hundred twenty. It's like sixty. Uh, you know and the, and stuff like that. So it's just like a little bit of a downgrade, but they're way cheaper usually. And that's usually what they're announcing here, as well as like refrigerators and vacuums and robots and kind of stuff. So I, I usually tune into the unboxing events just because uh, you get to see the developers, the CEO, the people that actually spent their lives building these equipment up on stage talking about this stuff. Um, and it's great because uh, really they did not used to publicly air these things for you to just jump on and watch uh, whenever you want on YouTube. And now you can pretty much go on YouTube and anywhere online and just watch these. Yeah, you'd have um, to play it. Well, things, so. these days everybody streams everything. So yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> uh, what is it? They're each, the Worldwide Developer Conference. I can't wait to see. Yeah what's going to happen with that i think yep. that big one is in june but we'll probably see some stuff earlier than that yeah um yeah oh uh, no that's 20 that's not this year's I'm trying to find it but <laughs> you're good it's going to be interesting to see what yeah what they're up with that. every year i look forward to hoping that there's going to be something really cool and I'm, right. it's just oh here's another ipad here's another iphone can you give us something new uh, yeah they you changed two things it's going to have new software and a better camera i'm like you've done that three generations you can't even put a how better a right how about something different something different at least samsung tries to change it up every now and then with like fingerprint readers in the screen and pinhole cameras and all kinds of weird stuff and i like that i like that they're trying and innovating on on new ideas constantly um, and that, uh, not that Apple isn't doing that. I'm sure they're doing all that behind the scenes, but we, we as consumers never get to see the end product of that. Only until it is like the iPhone, whatever name they put after it or number or whatever. Um, I, I have mm -hmm. a feeling they may just drop the whole iPhone numbering system completely so. and just they're say iPhone I something. Like they'll Apple, switch it. It could just be the Apple phone. Yeah, I really think that. they might try and just completely, because... It, it, why ruin his it legacy? And I think that would be a way to get out of that. <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> they're getting rid of iMac, basically. But So you have Apple everything. Is it just going to be the Apple Pad, Apple Tablet? Or just going to keep iPad, maybe? I, or maybe it could be the know. iMac phone, maybe? Maybe that's what's coming next? Uh, that sounds terrible, by the way. <laughs> The fact that it sounds terrible means they won't do it. I know. That means they'll probably be Did working you? on it. Right? He said I'm at phone. He we need to start working on that. Because we will get going soon. Did you ever see the old um, Mad TV sketch? Uh, I probably. With, I used uh, to watch it religiously. Steve Jobs. Um, I think I did. They were just, they were <laughs> debuting. This was in the middle of the guy um, that played Stewart played Steve Ward. Jobs, right? Middle of all the wars we were in, and oh my gosh, he, just they to were, find that. It, it was when we were, I think, pulling out of Iraq. Yes, oh my gosh, I know exactly they, the video you're the talking Iraq. about. This is the Iraq, and then <laughs> but we the, already uh, have the that. Reports, like, it doesn't look very stable. Oh, trust me, it is. The, uh, Iraq is perfectly stable. <laughs> oh my and god, that was gold. That was a yes. gold episode. I was like peeing my pants it, laughing it at it it was so funny yeah. i'm actually gonna try and... that tv iraq that that hit the nail on the head um with what was happening at the point. i'm trying to see if i can find it really quick here because it was so funny i don't know if we can oh. pull it up without yeah. getting ourselves I, I, yeah that is true issues. that is true <laughs> i'll share the link to people Just share the link in the description um, but yeah if you ever watched man tv back in the day they always found a way to to make a really crappy situation hilarious. And that was perfect because we were always used to Steve Jobs getting up and like flaunting about whatever new product looked amazing and mm -hmm. how we should buy it. And we're like, this doesn't even look very good. Why do we even need this, Steve? Come on now. Like we've already got six versions of this. And like here they are talking about Iraq and all that. It was so funny. I mean, 
literally and i think that the computer actually ends up they, bursting into flames at the end of it or something he runs out of the room something or something like, like that it was really it, funny. Iraq was there, it was a shell <laughs> yes that's what that it was, was poorly put together that's all it was <laughs> that was the iraq and, and no it it's not stable <laughs> because it wasn't it, that political commentary that well, and ironically, I mean, they did that. South Park did that. Everybody did that. They did uh, they, come out with a, some like a, a some kind of holder for a uh, I, the screen or whatever, and you'd you'd put your. It was essentially just a stand. It was just the clip that holds the screen on the back of it, you know, to hold your screen in place for you. And oh, they were selling oh, it for you're like talking about their um, their top of the line <laughs> um, Apple's top of the line monitor yes. that stand is like a seven thousand yes. dollars yes stand. that's the thing that's what i'm talking about who spends seven who has that kind of expansion on a income? monitor stand i'm pulling that up uh <laughs> like i gotta i gotta read what wh how does that boardroom <laughs> go down can we go over this how does that situation so what what do we I sell would, this love, at price wise like I would love to be in that room <laughs> yeah in that uh board meeting like we're gonna make this monitor stand <laughs> and it's pro pro display xdr is what oh they call my god um, and really it um, was just because you could rotate it right like you could switch the screen rotation and that it was, was it something about balance or i i honestly what? have no clue what Come they were trying on. to do if this could make my screen um, fly around the room and follow me i will pay seven thousand dollars for that but it doesn't <laughs> Retina 6K display. We're up to 8K already, so that's it's kind already of outdated. Matter. <laughs> uh, but I mean, uh, it's a beautiful. Is monitor. is it I mean, worth? It, it is gorgeous. Ten grand. But this stand, it's just billeted aluminum. Just this I mean, little... you can get a Ford Focus for that price. <laughs> Maybe a Fiesta. Yeah, you really. <laughs> You really could. Um, or a screen. I'm scrolling through. Car, to... screen. Oh, here we go. <laughs> buy. If I hit buy, let's see what the cost oh, is because this is going to be. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I mean, okay, so Apple, unfortunately, that was the main reason why you do not see me having and owning really any Apple products at this point. Um, I did uh, honestly own an iPhone and a MacBook Pro for years, and I loved my MacBook Pro. Would I you... hated my iPhone. It was way back when they first came out. I think it was like a two or a three or something. And I switched to like the Evo 4G after that, which was actually crappier than the the iPhone 3 or whatever I had. I honestly don't even remember what it was. It was that. It might have been an S I was or wrong, something. By the way. I'm sorry. It's only, the, the stand is, it, it's not $7,000. Okay. It's only a <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make it any better. Would you like would you like your display with nano texture glass or regular glass? So okay, let me get this straight. Regular is five thousand. This is the, <laughs> the monitor itself, thirty-two inch. Regular is a thousand is five thousand. Nano texture glass. I don't even know what that is. Six. 000. Does anyone? The pro does stand it even, is does, nine hundred and ninety. Does what you're plugging it into even support it? <laughs> They make a mount adapter that will mount it to any other sort of wall mount oh, wow. for two hundred dollars. So for twelve hundred, so, you can get it to mount to anything you want, or mm -hmm. you could buy a PlayStation Five and a Series X Xbox, oh, yeah. as well as a couple Pretty of much. games, and go home and play those on your normal I screen that you. Can. I did an experiment like five, six years ago to figure out. Just uh, how much I could spend on one computer system. Oh, I remember you Apple's doing that. Website, and it was like top of the line computer, top of the line monitor, most expensive mouse. Wasn't keyboard, it a million every something? Bit of software. I got to like forty thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Just I thought you were way system. over that. I mean, all the bells and whistles, but just one system. <laughs> and, what did I that mean, run, days, by the way? Was that like a Windows dual boot to like six other operating Mac, systems or something? It was a Mac Pro. It was. Uh, like the big behemoth back when oh, they were Oh, uh, yes. I actually liked that design. That looked really cool. Still, we're really pushing, um, what's it called, where you can dual boot windows, whatever that's called. Yeah. Uh, um, I can't I don't remember. remember. <laughs> I, I've used... Dual booting, that's what I call it. <laughs> adding all of the, like I said, all the best speakers, all the best software, right. any, the whole Adobe suite. Exactly. Of, anything they offer. And, I mean... The new, 
a new Mac Pro, like if I went on right now, I could probably spend a hell of a lot more money. Holy crap, we've got five people in here. Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> We're still going. <laughs> Welcome to the last few minutes of our uh, podcast, but... Uh, it's okay though we, we we're having a great time we've been talking about please leave us some comments let us know if you guys have any questions uh we'll be talking about the apple products right now and uh i know that we're way off topic we were talking about you know gta 5 and meteorites and all kinds we of just stuff kind of went into everything we've today. really covered it okay. all which is fantastic uh i mean considering that you know Holy we've crap oh what am i missing i'm looking at the Okay, you go to Apple's website, customize oh, your no. Mac Pro. Oh, no, I, I'm go, terrified already. we got to get off soon. I've got stuff, but <laughs> let's go to – I'm doing this for you all right now. We're going to go to um, this mic. Hey there, Rachel. Great to see you. Oh, hey, Rachel. <laughs> Sorry that Hi, you're bored Rachel. at work. <laughs> so here we go. Um, 2.5 gigahertz, 28 core Intel Xeon. It's a Xeon with, um, processor. Xeon W processor, Turbo Boost, up to 4.4 gigahertz. That's okay. Like so my base processor can still go faster. Anyway, continue. <laughs> 28 core. Um, that's base price seven thousand dollars. But it's 28 core. Um, How many threads? Go. Is it 48 or uh, what? What would that be? Uh, so. 36 um, a lot way too many like i mean because you're, if you're hyper threading that well, out now it lets me select memory so i can go up to 1.5 terabits wait can you do multiple terabits. cpus because they used to let you do that too like if you're building a server version do they let you do that you're anymore? doing a 28 core you don't need multiple yes CPUs. you do oh, they, they need two <laughs> they have i should check on that but this just desktop seven thousand dollars now let's go to memory um, how about a terabyte and a half of DDR4? I don't know. That might not be enough. <laughs> $25,000. What are we trying Graphics. to render? <laughs> Top end. Two Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo with two times 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. So okay. Okay. 64 gigabytes <laughs> of, of just video virtual memory. memory. Like that. Store. We're gonna to go to an eight terabyte uh, S SSD. Put an um, MVME Af in it. Apple Afterburner card. Why, Why not? not? Stainless Do it. Frame with wheel. Yes. Magic Mouse two yes. and Magic Trackpad two. One hundred percent. All of those things. Yes. Is it still loading? Did we uh, break let's it? Let's add Final Cut Pro. Let's add Logic Pro because that's everything. Because of course you're gonna to want to those. That's what you're using it for, right? Okay. So. Highest price that I can find on there. This is how much I could spend right now if I ordered everything they offered. Take a guess on how much this is worth. Um, or how much it costs. I want to say probably just under 200 grand. That's a pretty high estimate, actually. Uh, I'd be spending about 54,000. Oh, I'm way off. I'm so high. I was <laughs> like, okay, triple that. <laughs> Get four of those. So with that... <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, everybody, I appreciate you guys all. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, you guys want to see more of, you know, whatever, you want to know more about gaming or movies or Grand Theft Auto, whatever it is, meteorites, let us know. Um, we'll dive into that. We are live every Wednesday at noon. Um, if, you know, hopefully that's a good time for everybody. We can try to play with that a little bit. I know we're, we're both busy as, as heck, but Thank you very much. we appreciate the views. Loving you guys. Tell everybody about it. And definitely don't forget to like and share. We do put all of this on our YouTube channel, the Cookies Enabled uh, logo, which is up here. And uh, so definitely go ahead and uh, like and subscribe to our channel. And uh, we will definitely have our Cookies Enabled episode coming out next one or Monday as well. Uh, which will be the explanation of cookies, what that stupid banner pop-up is at the bottom that says accept mm -hmm. all cookies. That's the explanation and the history behind all of that and where that came from. I think we talk about dial-up internet and AOL and a real flashback there. So stick around and find out what we talk about. I love you guys. Have a great night. I'm hoping we all learned something today. I know I did. And uh, definitely thank you for tuning in, and we will see you guys all next time. Have a good one, guys. See ya. Thank you.